You've probably seen big planes before, but nothing, nothing like this. Two full decks, four engines, up to 850 passengers in a single configuration. The Airbus A380 wasn't just a large aircraft, it was a flying terminal. At maximum takeoff weight, it tipped the scales at over 1.2 million pounds, with a wingspan that forced airports to redesign gates, taxiways, and even runways. But here's the real question. Why was it built at all? By the 1990s, airlines were downsizing. Twin-engine aircraft like the 767-777 and A330 were proving more efficient, cheaper to run, and faster to turn around. So why did Airbus bet everything on an ultra-large quad jet in an era moving toward point-to-point -to -point efficiency? Was it visionary or a calculated risk driven by national pride and Boeing rivalry? Today, we'll break down the rise, resistance, and reality of the A380. From its bold conception and brutal setbacks to its unexpected return post-pandemic, we'll explore why this aircraft divided the industry and why it's still turning heads. Because once you understand what really went into making it fly, you'll see why the A380 isn't just big, it's historic. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Robert Ting speaking to us from the flight deck of the A380. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite you to watch the sky and the screens as the A380 will be arriving in it. Launched officially in 2005 and entering service with Singapore Airlines in 2007, the Airbus A380 was Airbus's answer to the long-standing reign of the Boeing 747. But rather than simply outclass the jumbo in capacity, Airbus went further. The A380 is the largest passenger aircraft ever built, capable of carrying up to 853 passengers in an all-economy configuration. It also has a range of 8,000 nautical miles, connecting cities like Dubai to Los Angeles or Sydney to London non-stop. But underneath the glamour lies a masterpiece of engineering complexity. Four massive turbofans, 22 wheels, a multinational production process, and an aircraft structure that pushes the limit of material science. Every part of the Airbus A380, from the swooping wingtip fences to the tail-mounted fuel tanks, exists because it had to. It's an aircraft born not just from ambition, but from necessity, a sky crusher that needed to be strong, smart, and efficient to justify its size. And that's what makes it the greatest, not just because it's the biggest, but because it works exceptionally well at being that big. The Airbus A380 didn't just appear. It was the result of a two-decade ambition to dethrone the 747 and redefine what a hub-to-hub -hub aircraft could be. But its story begins earlier than most people realize. Not in the 2000s, but in the mid-1980s, when Airbus quietly started evaluating ultra-high-capacity airliners under a program codenamed A3XX, Airbus's secret project name for developing the massive A380 Super Jumbo Jet. The need was obvious. Global air travel was growing rapidly and major airports were becoming congested. Instead of relying on more flights, Airbus envisioned bigger aircraft and fewer takeoffs but with far more people. The A3XX project studied everything from triple-deck configurations to blended wing-body designs, but the eventual result was the A380, a full-length double-decker, wide-body aircraft, something the world had never seen. From the outset, the technical challenges were staggering. No aircraft had ever attempted this kind of scale. The wings alone were too large to be transported overland from factories to the final assembly line in Toulouse, France, so Airbus built an entirely new transport logistics network, including custom-built ships and barges, new roads in southwestern France, and even widened highways. This was aviation megalomania done right. The development program cost an estimated $25 billion, a massive gamble on Airbus's part. Over 60,000 engineers and technicians from 16 countries were involved. Major components, wings from the UK, 
fuselage sections from Germany and Spain, and the cockpit from France, had to fit with microscopic precision when they met on the Toulouse final assembly line. Internally, engineers had to reimagine how such a large aircraft could remain structurally viable without being overweight. This meant a heavy use of advanced aluminum alloys, carbon fiber reinforced plastic, and a specially developed glare composite, lighter than aluminum yet stronger and more fatigue resistant. The pressurization system had to be redesigned, especially for the massive upper deck fuselage, which posed unique stresses at altitude. And there were digital issues too. Famously, Airbus suffered delays when German and French engineering teams were using incompatible versions of a computer-aided design tool used by engineers and designers to create precise drawings, 3D models, and technical plans CAD software, which led to mismatched wiring harnesses, a costly setback that required significant rework. But against all odds, the A380 made its first flight on April 27, 2005 from Toulouse, a moment that sent ripples through the aviation world. From a distance, the A380's size is overwhelming, but up close, the subtleties of its aerodynamic design tell a story of surgical engineering. Every curve, taper, and angle was dictated by the demands of physics because lifting 1.2 million pounds of aircraft into the sky isn't just about brute thrust, it's about mastering airflow. Let's start with the fuselage. At over 72 meters long and nearly 8.4 meters wide, the A380's double-deck structure posed unique aerodynamic challenges. Airbus used advanced computational fluid dynamics modeling to shape the aircraft in a way that reduced parasitic drag while maintaining internal volume. The slightly tapered nose and blended impenage smooth out airflow, minimizing pressure differentials that could create instability. The wing design is a triumph of high-lift engineering. But critically, the wing is swept at 33.5 degrees allowing the aircraft to cruise at Mach 0.85 without generating excessive wave drag. At this speed, compressibility effects start to matter, so the sweep angle, combined with the camber profile, ensures that lift is maximized without early boundary layer separation. One little-known innovation, the A380, features active load alleviation systems. These monitor gusts and loads during flight and use the ailerons and spoilers to distribute stresses dynamically, reducing wing fatigue. That's part of why the wings can be so large. They've got help managing the forces. Also worth noting is the horizontal stabilizer, the largest ever fitted to a commercial aircraft. With over 36 meters of span, it provides essential pitch authority at low speeds, especially during high angle of attack climbs. To support this, the tail cone houses tail trim fuel tanks, which redistribute fuel during cruise for better center of gravity control and cruise efficiency, a feature rarely appreciated but absolutely critical. From an aeroacoustic standpoint, the A380 is quiet, thanks to both engine nacelle shaping and fuselage dampening. Even the wing root fairings are optimized to reduce turbulent flow around gear and flap structures. It's also worth mentioning the advanced fly-by-wire system, inherited and expanded from the A320. It uses five flight computers, built-in redundancy, and real-time envelope protection to allow the pilot to command intent, not surface deflections. This makes flying the A380 feel, according to many pilots, lighter than flying a 737. Get up. Now, check. The A380's wings are, without exaggeration, aerodynamic cathedrals, each measuring nearly 36 meters from root to tip, giving the aircraft an unfolded span of 79.75 meters. Designed to produce the enormous lift required for takeoff at lower speeds. Let's talk structure first. The A380's wings use a hybrid composition of aluminium-lithium alloys, 
and carbon fiber reinforced plastic, especially in high stress areas like the wing box and stringers. Each wing can flex up to four meters under full load, helping to distribute aerodynamic and structural stress. This flexibility isn't a flaw. It's a feature engineered to reduce fatigue and absorb gust energy. The wing features complex high lift devices, a combination of triple slotted flaps, full span leading edge slats, and 16 spoilers. These spoilers serve multiple roles, roll control, drag brakes, and lift dumpers during landing. At low speeds, these devices significantly increase the coefficient of lift, allowing the A380 to take off and land at manageable speeds despite its enormous mass. Now let's get to the real muscle, the engines. The Airbus A380 can be powered by two engine options, the Rolls-Royce Trent 900 or the Engine Alliance G P7200. Both are high-bypass turbofan engines producing up to 80,000 pounds of thrust each. That's a total of over 320,000 pounds of combined thrust, more than double that of a fully loaded 777. The fan diameter of these engines is over 2.95 meters, and the bypass ratio is in excess of 8.5 to 1, meaning a massive volume of air bypasses the core, reducing noise and improving efficiency. Despite the thrust, these engines are quiet thanks to Chevron nozzles, acoustic linings, and low NOx combustors. One fascinating detail, the inboard engines are positioned closer to the fuselage than those on most quads. This reduces yaw moment in the event of engine failure and improves airflow interaction with the wings. The pylon mounting incorporates load redistribution structures, which also act as primary load paths between the engine and wing spar. On top of that, the full authority digital engine control systems monitor and adjust performance thousands of times per second, ensuring optimal fuel burn and engine health throughout flight. The A380's fuel capacity is a staggering 320,000 liters, distributed across 11 tanks, including the trim tank and the horizontal stabilizer. This allows precise management of the center of gravity during long-haul flights, crucial for such a large and dynamically sensitive airframe. Ultimately, the combination of high-lift wing design and ultra-high thrust engines allows the A380 to fly with unmatched grace taking off at speeds around 150 to 165 knots, climbing steadily, and cruising efficiently across oceans. For any plane nerd, the wings and engines are the mechanical poetry of this aircraft, a symphony of design, pressure ratios, thrust management, and lift geometry that brings the sky within reach. The last few months um, have been very frustrating because we've had, um, obviously, a lot of a, a technical difficulties with systems on the aircraft. We've had a lot of problems during testing, so we've all been working very, very, very hard in order to, to have all of our systems all working um, for first flight. Hey! Woo! <laughs> so that's system one, looking good. To understand the full magnitude of the Airbus A380, examine its landing gear. This system is so massive and meticulously designed, it could qualify as a standalone engineering project. The Airbus A380's landing gear includes 22 wheels distributed across five landing gear assemblies, two six-wheel bogies on the body landing gear positioned under the fuselage, two four-wheel bogies on the main gear located under each wing route, and a two-wheel nose gear. This extensive configuration supports a maximum takeoff weight of 1.2 million pounds or 560,000 kilograms. It also distributes this weight evenly enough to operate on existing runways. The design ensures pavement classification numbers do not exceed what major international airports can manage. The gear rotates and compresses during takeoff and landing. Main landing gear employs trailing arm suspension systems to absorb touchdown forces. Body gear bogies rotate during retraction to fold into the fuselage without interfering with internal systems. 
This entire folding sequence is precisely coordinated by the gear extension and retraction system, known as GERS, which uses hydraulic actuators, locking collars, and sequence door actuators. Each wheel on the main gear is equipped with carbon disc brakes. These are controlled by a brake to vacate system in conjunction with auto brake settings. Carbon brakes are lighter and more heat resistant than traditional steel brakes, which is essential for stopping a jet of this size. Takeoff and landing speeds range from 150 to 165 knots, depending on aircraft weight and configuration. Despite its size, the A380 can rotate within 2,900 meters, or approximately 9,500 feet, compatible with the runway lengths of most international airports. Airbus optimized wing loading and high lift systems to ensure enough lift is generated at moderate speeds. The nose gear is also highly engineered. It can steer up to 75 degrees and is tailored to the elevated cockpit, providing pilots a taxiing view comparable to a three-story building. This necessitated the design of extra-tall tugs and custom tow bars for ground handling. Turn radius was a unique challenge. The outer main gear is steerable, enabling the aircraft to execute 180-degree turns on standard width taxiways. Without this feature, operations would be severely limited. The Airbus A380's landing gear is not only strong, it is intelligent, modular, and scalable. It transforms what should be an unmanageable load into a repeatable and reliable component of each flight cycle. This system is one of the unsung engineering feats that makes the aircraft's operation viable. The Airbus A380 has no direct competitor. It exists in a class of its own. However, comparisons help contextualize its scale and performance. Consider the Boeing 747-8, the Boeing 777X, and the Antonov and 225, evaluated in terms of size, not function. Passenger comfort is unmatched. No other aircraft offers as much space per seat, particularly in premium cabins. The quiet cabin, low turbulence, and high cabin pressure altitude, approximately 5,000 feet, reduce fatigue. In this context, fatigue refers to the tiredness, exhaustion, or discomfort passengers often feel during or after a flight, especially on long-haul journeys. It's caused by factors like low oxygen levels, cabin pressure, noise, and vibration. Safety performance is exceptional. The Airbus A380 maintains a strong safety record, supported by numerous redundant systems. In engineering, the aircraft demonstrates advanced structural design, flight control systems, and aerodynamic efficiency at an unprecedented scale. Finally, there is the matter of prestige. The Airbus A380 is recognized globally. Its arrival at airports garners attention and symbolizes ambition in commercial aviation. Although critics argue it is oversized for a post-pandemic aviation market, the aircraft retains a loyal following among passengers, pilots, and aviation enthusiasts. Carriers like Emirates have based entire brand identities on the A380. The Airbus A380 is more than an aircraft. It is the pinnacle of passenger aviation. Though production has ceased, its legacy continues an airborne monument to what modern engineering can achieve when the goal is to go beyond limits. If you thought the A380 was an engineering marvel, wait until you see the Tri-J that changed aviation forever. Watch my deep dive into the legendary DC-10 next. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe for more deep dives into aviation's greatest aircraft.